Hello, the internet. I'm Dr. Peter Allen. During the week, I am a bioanalytical chemist, and during the weekend, I like to make these little explainer videos. And what's been on my mind lately are some of the comments I've been getting on this YouTube channel. Uh, most of them are super supportive, and I really appreciate that. And if you've left a nice comment, thank you. Other ones are, well, to the person who uh, said I have lesbian hair, thank you. Uh, one does what one can. And to the people who leave really weird, distrustful, anti-science stuff, I sometimes I feel like I go to YouTube and I just say, hey YouTube, what are the comments like today? And then, yeah, you know, same as usual. But uh, I, I was speculating that maybe one of the reasons why there is so much distrust and a hostility to science might be just sort of a lack of familiarity that maybe scientists, especially biosciences, with the virus and the pandemic, maybe we need to do a better job of talking about how we know what we know. I think people have a reasonably clear idea of the basic concept of a telescope or a microscope. So if an astronomer talks about what they know, people are like, oh yeah, they probably used a telescope and I've used a pair of binoculars. I know how that basic idea might work. And if you're talking about some microbe, people have probably used or at least seen a microscope and they understand that professional scientific instruments are bigger, more expensive, more powerful, but we have a cultural familiarity. Most people have used a microscope in high school at least. But we don't really have that for biochemistry. People say things like, well, there are these antibodies and they bind to a virus. That feels like, well, they're too small to see. They're too small to see with even with a microscope. How do we know this stuff? So I wanna talk about one particular way of learning about these sorts of biochemical interactions. Now, there's dozens of these kinds of experiments, lots of them working on many different biological principles. But this, this is just one. And there are thousands of scientists who do any number of these. And this one is not unique or special. It's just an example that I like. So it's called surface plasmon resonance, or SPR, and I'll go through briefly how it works. So here's some context. This is the life cycle of the SARS coronavirus. It binds to a cell. That's this whole thing down here. It binds by letting its spike protein interact with this ACE2 receptor, and then it gets into the cell, it replicates, it makes more viruses, and those get kicked back out of the cell. What I want to focus on is this interaction right here between one protein on the virus and another protein on the human cell. That's the kind of interaction that surface plasmon resonance can actually measure. If you have a very thin gold coat on a piece of glass, it will act like a mirror. And if you shine a laser at that mirror, it will be reflected. But a very thin gold mirror has a funny property. At one specific angle, the light doesn't get reflected. It gets absorbed and disappears. Now, this is a really interesting property of the optical physics of photons and metals, but we don't need to know about that. For our purposes, it's enough to know that this thing happens. There's an angle, and we can build an instrument to measure that angle. Depending on what's right next to the gold mirror, the next molecule over from the gold, if you will, the angle will change. So if the gold is in air, you get one angle. If you immerse the gold in some water, you get a different angle. If you put it in sugar water or alcohol, you get more angles again. But now we have a chemical tool. Anything that changes the molecules that are stuck to the gold will change the angle that the instrument measures. So this angle gives you kind of a ruler that lets you measure how much stuff is bound to that gold surface. So if you attach, say, some coronavirus spike protein to the gold, you get one angle. If you then add some ACE2, it binds to the spike protein and that changes the angle even more. If something sticks strongly, it is really hard to wash it away. If it sticks weakly, it is really easy to wash it off. So this instrument allows us to measure the interactions between any two given biomolecules. Two different proteins, a protein and an antibody, those interactions can be very specifically measured and very precisely measured with regard to how strong they are. And you can imagine this might be really interesting for something like 
will this new antibody bind to that old variant or vice versa will this new variant be disrupted by that old antibody so that brings us to this paper Manor et al. published SARS-CoV-2 Omicron variant, the antibody evasion and cryo-EM structure of spike proteinase 2 complex. So they do two things. They ask, can the Omicron variant evade various antibodies, which they evaluated using both SPR and some direct measures of whether an antibody could stop the virus from replicating? as well as doing electron microscopy analysis of this very important spike protein ACE2 complex. The spike protein binds to ACE2 in order to get into the cell. So here's what the actual SPR data look like. In this case, they've immobilized the ACE2 receptor on the gold surface, and then they're injecting a little bit and then a little more and a little bit more and a little bit more of the spike protein and watching that angle change critically once they've allowed that to bind they try to wash it back off and by looking at the on rate and the off rate they can calculate how strong that interaction is and then they can compare how strong that interaction is between the original coronavirus the delta variant and the omicron variant and compare that across a bunch of different statistical analyses in terms of the actual strength of that interaction Anyhow, thanks for coming with me on my little walk and talk about surface plasma and resonance and trust of science. <laughs> Hope this was interesting and uh, yeah, we'll see you all next time.